Welcome to worship at St. Paul Lutheran Church in Lidditz. I'm Pastor Robert Wallace, Associate Pastor, and I welcome you as we gather together. You've seen the bracelets. You've looked at the initials. WWJD. Often said, what would Jesus do? But what if we say, what would Jesus dare? That's how it is with the way of faith. At times, our faith in God leads us to having to take a risk, having to step out. Pastor Rob approaches this question today in his message. I'm glad we're together here in the sanctuary, live streaming, and I pray that this service is a blessing for you this day. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. I'm Pastor Rob Miles, and welcome this morning to, to St. Paul, another beautiful fall day in which we're gathered here, gathered under the cross to worship our Lord. Today there'll be a lot of uh, wonderful pieces actually related to stewardship, and uh, so I'm going to actually invite Sandy Bingham, and she's a member of our church council, and she's going to share a little bit about why St. Paul is meaningful to her and why she also is committed. Good morning. Good morning. Pastor Rob has asked me to share some of my thoughts about our church, St. Paul. I feel privileged to be here with you this morning. So let me start by saying we are so blessed to have two ministers, Pastor Rob and Pastor Wallace, who are committed to teaching and preaching the Word of God, to listen to wonderful music provided by Becky, the choir, the bell choir, and the praise band. We are blessed to have Deaconess Emily who delights us with her creative children's messages and our many youth programs and so much more. So much of this takes place right here in this beautiful sanctuary. Over the years, I have experienced attending Lutheran churches in different parts of the country and I have discovered what really makes a church. It's you. It's people like you. People who are kind and caring and thoughtful. I am involved in several committees, one of which is uh, I serve in church council, and I am active with WELCA, Women of the ELCA, but I have never experienced the warmth the love and the generosity as I have experienced here. So I encourage you to participate in whatever way you are able, whether it is your time, your money, or your talent. But make St. Paul your home and let us continue to grow in God's love together. Thank you. Thank you for that, Sandy. At this point, I invite us to take a breath after the week we've all been through and know that we have been invited into the presence of the living Lord.
Please rise as you are able. <clears throat> we worship in the name in which we baptize, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin. Receive your forgiveness and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us pause for reflection as we confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Hear the good news. Out of great love, God sent the beloved Son into this world to die for your sins. And as Jesus Christ lives victorious from the grave, I declare to you that in his name, your sins are forgiven. Amen. And indeed, alleluia. Together we join in singing hymn number 632, O oh God, our help in ages past. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the 
peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. to God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, mighty God and Lord, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Son of the Father, Lord God and our God, Let us pray. Righteous God, our merciful master, you own the earth and all its people, and you give us all that we have. Inspire us to serve you with justice and wisdom, and prepare us for the joy of the day of your coming. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. I you to be seated for our readings. Today's reading comes from the first chapter of Ephesians, verses 1 to 14. The reading is found on page 251 in the New Testament of the Pew Bibles. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, to the saints who are in Ephesus and are faithful in Christ Jesus, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption in his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. In him we have redemption to the blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace that he lavished on us. With all wisdom and insight, he has made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure that he set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time, to gather up all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. In Christ, we have also obtained an inheritance, having been destined according to the purpose of him who accomplishes all things according to his counsel and will, so that we, who were the first to set our hope on Christ, might live for the praise of his glory. In him, you also, when you had heard the word of truth, 
the gospel of your salvation and have believed in him were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance toward redemption as God's own people to the praise of his glory. The word of the Lord. We will read Psalm 90 responsibly as printed in the bulletin. Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, wherever you have formed the earth and the world, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You turn us back to dust and say, turn back, you mortals. For a thousand years in your sight, are you like yesterday when it is past, or like a watch in the night? You sweep them away. They are like a dream, like grass that is renewed in the morning. In the morning it flourishes and is renewed. In the evening it fades and withers. For we are consumed by your anger. By your wrath we are overwhelmed. You have set our iniquities before you, our secret sins in the light of your countenance. So teach us to count our days that we may gain a wise heart. according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the disciples, For it is if a man going on a journey summoned his servants and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, this is this ancient unit of money, to another two and to another one, each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more talents in the same way, the one who had two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. The one who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents, and see, I have made five more. His master said, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. And I will put you in charge of many things and turn to the joy of your master. The one with the two talents came forward saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents and see, I have made two more. His master said, Well done, good and trustworthy servant. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things and enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent came forward and said, Master, I know you're a harsh man reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid. And I went out and I hid your talent in the ground. Here is what is yours. Master replied, you wicked and lazy slave. You knew, did you, that I reap where I did not sow and gather where I did not scatter? Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and on my return I would have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to the one with ten talents. For to all those who have, more will be given, and they will have an abundance. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I invite you to be seated. Children's message. Good morning, church. Good morning, kids. You're welcome. You're invited to join me over here for a kid's message on that gospel that we just heard. So come on over. And we can be together. It gives you a chance to move around. And always a welcome to those who are worshiping with us online. Kids, too. Here comes your sister, Addie. She's coming over, too. Well, I have a book today that I'm eager to share with you. Some of you have seen it, but some of you it will be new. And it's a book that sometimes I bring to the Sunday school classes as just something fun, kind of funny, kind of silly, that we read together. Well, this book is called... Hey, that's not what the Bible says. And so we read this book from time to time, one story at a time, and we try to, we try to say that and figure out at what point is that not what the Bible says. So I have a couple stories I want to share with you. And it will say on the page, and when you know it's time, and the whole congregation can join in, you can say, hey, 
That's not what the Bible says. Here's the first one. You'll get the hang of it. One day, a man named Moses was busy tending his sheep. Sure. Just then, a mailman appeared with a letter from God. Special delivery, the mailman said. I have a letter for Mr. Moses. And in the letter, God explained that he couldn't remember Moses' phone number, so he had to write the special message. Hey, that's not what the Bible says. No, God really spoke to Moses as a voice coming from a burning bush. Okay, you get the hang of it. Here's another one. Jesus began to teach the people about God, and one evening after teaching all day, Jesus got into a boat with his closest friends, and he fell asleep. And a storm came, and the waves crashed against the boat, and Jesus' friends were scared, and they woke up Jesus, and they said, Save us, Jesus, save us. So Jesus reached down, found the secret control panel, flipped the secret power switch, and instantly the little boat was transformed into a watertight, nuclear-powered New Testament submarine. <laughs> hey, that's not what the Bible says. Right, no, instead the Bible says Jesus spoke to the storm, and he said, be still, and all was calm. Okay, I've got one more. Some people didn't believe that Jesus was the Son of God. They wanted Jesus killed for the things that he said. Soldiers arrested Jesus and led him away to be crucified on a cross. We know that part of the story. But then Jesus turned into super-duper mega-Jesus, superhero, and he beat up all the soldiers. <gasps> hey, that's not what the Bible says. No, Jesus didn't beat up anyone. He didn't even try to get away. He died on that cross for our sins, and he did that for us. Well, I have a story that I want to add to the book. It's not in the book, but it goes like this. There was a church that gathered all these boxes with coins in them, and they brought them all to the church. And then they decided to dig a big hole in the back of the church, bury all the money, cover it with all the dirt, and never see that money again. Is that what the Bible says? Is that what God wants us to do with all these boxes that we gather? No! There's been a lot of these boxes that people are bringing in from their homes. They prayed as they put coins in them. Some people brought them last week. More people are bringing them today. And we are not going to hide these boxes or bury them somewhere. No, the gospel lesson that we heard today is about sharing our gifts. And so the Bible does say, take what you have, what God has first given you, and share it with others. And that's what we're doing with these special boxes today. And that's what you, boys and girls, can do at any age. Share the gifts and the joy and the goodness that God has given you with others. So let's say a prayer, and everybody can please repeat after me as we join our hearts together. Thank you, Lord, for all the talents that you've given us. Help us share them every day. Amen. Your kids bulletin is all about that gospel that we heard, sharing your gifts so you can take one back. Oh, I hope you're all right. Thank you for coming up. Here you go. Do you, want, do you think your sister wants one too? You can take one. Okay. Harper, do you want one? All right. Do you think your sister wants one too? I've decided that I'm just going to keep wearing the style of pants that I like to wear because I figure that every 20 or 30 years, stuff goes in and out of style. And this way, in my life, I'm guaranteed two or three times to have been in style at some point, right? Like, we know these trends kind of go and come back. And recently, I saw something that a youth was wearing, and uh, it brought me back to when I was a youth, and I haven't seen them kind of in the last 20 or 30 years. And it was a bracelet, and the bracelet had four letters, WWJD. 
what would Jesus do? And I guess these bracelets are coming back. And uh, when I was a teenager, they were popular. They were given to us as teenagers to encourage us in part to be kind, but I think also to say no to certain things, right? To, to resist temptation. Again, this is, I think, what our parents were and our youth pastors and pastors were, were hoping that we would, would do. But I was uh, thinking a, a little bit about that, and, and I wondered if, if we could play around with, with those letters, WWJD, and instead of what would Jesus do, to change it to what would Jesus dare? What would Jesus dare to do? Again, so often we want to tell young people, right, lead us not into temptation, but I wonder if we can learn from youth and the willingness of youth to take some risks, because I think a lot of faith... Faith is really about living in an uncertain world in which we again and again have to make decisions when we don't know exactly how it's going to play itself out. This week I was with a family and the, the husband in the family, the father in the family has entered into really that last chapter of life. And that's a time of a lot of uncertainty. I'm sure you've, you've been there at some point in your family where the doctors tell you, well, this is kind of what the situation is, and they're not totally certain about what it's going to look like, but it seems like, again, we're entering into the final stages of life. And as a family, then, you have to make a lot of difficult decisions about level of care. You have to make decisions, you have to make phone calls, and people have to decide who's going to visit and when they're going to visit. And again, it's fraught with uncertainty. It's not totally clear how this person's life is going to play itself out, what the curve of their health will, will look like. Again, I, I think a lot of faith is living with courage having to make decisions, having to be a disciple when we don't exactly know what the future holds, yet we've got to keep living to take risks, as it were. In today's parable of the talents, Jesus, or God, really as represents the, the master here. And the master entrusts three of his servants with talents, a, a Greek unit of of money, which also has a nice play in English because it also can mean skills and gifts and time and so forth that we have. And one of them, well, really two of them, they take this money that they have and they choose to invest it. They take a risk with it. They don't simply do the, the safe thing. Again, they choose to invest it. There's a potential they could have lost it, so they take a risk. What would Jesus dare? And in fact, when they, when they all gather, the master says to them, the master says, well done, good and faithful. That being good and being faithful, being a disciple means we're also willing to take risks, to be willing to lose something, to make sacrifices for the sake of the gospel. Likewise, there's one servant, though, who, who says no, that they're so afraid of losing something that they choose to bury their talent. They choose to bury what God has given them. They didn't want to take any risks, and in so doing, they made a grave error and that they didn't use, they didn't grow, they didn't risk, they didn't have the courage to follow Jesus in an unfaithful, uncertain world in which we must somehow live and make risks to follow our Lord. Well, today we're going to be praying uh, for the thank offering boxes, and I want to tell you a little bit of the story of that for those that especially maybe coming into our church and are kind of, what are we talking about? Well, we uh, sent out about a month and a half ago little cardboard boxes, and we invited uh, people to pray daily, to pray for people they love, but also to pray for people in need, and to not just simply offer thoughts and prayers, but to give a little bit of a donation. The point was not to give a lot per se, but just to connect our faith and our finances, our prayers and our actions. Well, this goes back to some really bold women over a century ago, almost two centuries ago. Again, what would Jesus dare? 
And at that time, in, in almost all churches, women were not allowed to be pastors, but they were also often not allowed to serve on church councils or boards of elders. But again, they were bold in their faith, and they felt a call to, to love and to serve, and so they began to put together mission societies. But they, they needed funds for the mission societies because churches wouldn't let those women control the church money, so they had to raise their own money. So they came up with these boxes, and, they, and what they would do is they would collect, and they wanted to make it simply a coin so that the rich and the poor, the local and those overseas could, could give money. And so they would pray daily, and they would put their coins in, and out of that would grow and would be funded mission all over the world. Again, sometimes we're called to, to live boldly, live with courage, and take risks for, for the gospel. Last Sunday night was uh, a really wonderful night for our congregation and the community. I mean, last Sunday was All Saints Sunday, and it was just a beautiful Sunday here, and I was just so moved. But that night, we went up to, to Rock Lidditz, and that was where we had our empty bowls. And it was so cool to see uh, over 300 people, many of church members, but people in the community. And there were all these bowls that all these artists had made that were given away, and, and then there were all these restaurants that had their soup there, and it was just this really beautiful gathering of business and arts and the church, and it all goes back, really, to, to a, a conversation almost seven years ago with our, with our youth director, John, who had seen a, an empty bowls in Lancaster and said, could we bring this to Lidditz, and could the church support it? Oh, and that was a, and has been so much work, right? This risk of would people come? Would potters give their bowls? Would restaurants be willing to, to donate? Yet here we are a number of years later, and I think something like $13,000 was raised for the, for the food bank. Again, what would Jesus dare? How is Jesus calling us to, to take risks and to move forward in our faith? And I'm curious, in, in your life, where is there a risk that, that Jesus is calling you to? And, and maybe if you're a younger person, that has to do with your education or different clubs or, or sports or, or friendships and, and maybe even willing to break away from a toxic friendship or friendship group to go in another direction, to stretch out and go for that extra education again. Again, there's risks involved with using the talents that God has, has given us. Or maybe, again, it's your family knows all too well the story that I was sharing about end-of-life decisions and care and those tricky conversations we, we have to have. I was talking, too, to a person recently in our church who has had to confront a loved one about an addiction and that's a conversation fraught with risks that can go the wrong way and explode, but, but out of love, what would Jesus dare? And this person felt a need, felt inspired to lovingly, prayerfully confront their loved one. Hmm. Again, what are the risks in faith that Jesus is calling you to with your time, your treasure, or your talents? for the sake of God's kingdom and God's purposes. Well, one of the hardest things that we can do as a Christian, I think one of the ways it is a, a real challenge for us is, of course, to share and give away our gifts, to use them for the sake of others. And I think there's a, a way, too, in which when we uh, give away what we have, there's often a feeling that it's, we're not going to have enough. But in this story, there's a different fear that the, that the third servant has that, that causes him to bury his talents and not, and not use them, to not share them, to not give them away. And that is that, is that this, this third uh, servant, he's worried that he's going to lose it, that he's not going to be faithful, that he's not going to do a good job of investing it. I want to say that that's a fear that I know really well. And I know that fear really well because I'm one of the leaders at this congregation. 
And today we're asking, in the last month, we've asked you to make pledges, and and every week you all faithfully give. And as one of the leaders in this church, I take seriously the responsibility that there is, again, this collection of money, and how are we going to use it for God's purposes? And I, and I sort of, with fear and trembling, and the other leaders too, want to make sure that the, the financial resources that, that you all give, that we pull together, that they're used faithfully, that they bear fruit, that they're not wasted. I take this very seriously. I remember a few years ago, um, we got word from one of our Tanzanian partners, it's a school, and uh, I was talking to one of the teachers there, and it turned out that Well, it turned out that the teachers hadn't been paid in a number of months. It's a long story, but my heart broke for for these teachers. And and so I've, again, you're a generous congregation, so I was able to to send over some money. And what the teacher did was was just humbling in response. I, I think I sent him two different checks of 500. And with the first 500, what he did was I said, you know, you can, you can do with it what you need. And if, and if he had used it all for himself, I wouldn't have been surprised, right? I mean, if he hadn't gotten paid in a number of months. But what he did was he, he, he actually came up with the list. And he listed all of the teachers in the school. And he had them each sign. And they each signed for $13.50. And I was obviously touched by the accountability that he wanted to say, this is how the money was spent. But I couldn't imagine that in America we'd make people sign to say that you received $13.34. There's something very humbling there, a recognition again of wants and needs. But what I've also realized over time beautifully, what I've also realized over time beautifully is that the money that you all give that I feel entrusted with, I've begun more and more to realize it's God's money anyway. So last night I was at dinner with a pastor from Tanzania named Emmanuel Nchumvu. And he'll be with us today and he'll actually be uh, here for lunch. And uh, some of you may know him. He's been a counselor at Camp Kirkenwald the last two summers. And uh, he's studying uh, now at, at at the Lutheran Seminary. And so we were, we were talking, and, and he was talking about the sort of the risk that he's had to take to come to the United States, and the way in, in which he hasn't had, you know, the funding, how this has been challenging for his family at points. And he mentioned that his wife is a teacher, and that his wife as a teacher, she's at this school, and she hadn't been getting paid recently. And I kind of scratched my head, and I thought on the map, and I thought, well, he's too far away. But eventually we figured out that the the school where we had sent money two years ago and last year was the school where his wife works. And so I got open and I looked back on my my text message two years ago and I got open this little file that I had been sent and I looked on that list and the 20th name down was his wife's name. And it was just a reminder that long before he had come here even to work at Camp Kirkenwald that somehow through our church his family was was being blessed. It's a humbling reminder that although we consider it our money, finally it really is what this parable says, gifts from the Lord, that the Lord somehow in mysterious ways will bring about for the Lord's purposes. Again, what would Jesus dare were called to take risks for the gospel with our time and our treasure and our talent? And if it simply, again, were about being pure and never making a mistake, then when Jesus came to this world, he wouldn't have talked to anybody because all of us have lives that are complex, full of contradictions and brokenness and sin. But instead, Jesus chose, indeed, Jesus chose and chooses again and again to take a risk and to deal with us, to sit with us, to be with us, to guide us, to give us yet again more resources to see what we'll do with them this time. And ultimately, Jesus chose to take a great risk, a great risk to love us all and to ultimately die for our sake, fully trusting, fully trusting in the power of God's resurrection to renew and to bring him back. 
And so daily, Jesus comes to us as the one who has died for our sins and has risen from the grave. And he, he comes to us to forgive our sins, to give us our daily bread. And I think also from time to time to tell us to take that risk and to share the gifts and the talents that we have been given. Amen. Let us affirm our faith through saying the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. With the whole people of Christ Jesus, let us call upon God for the sake of the church, the world, and all those in need. God who provides, we give you thanks for all that you have given us. Open our hearts to be generous. We thank you for the ministry of this congregation that allows us to be rooted in your grace, grow in relationships with Jesus and each other, and serve in the world. As we make our pledges to the congregation for 2024, bless our contributions that they may further the ministry to which you have called us. Lord, in your mercy, God who provides, we acknowledge that many in our community, our nation, and in our world are hurting. Through the thank offering boxes, we have prayed for Homes for Hope, the women of the ELCA, and the Swanson family. 
Bless these partner ministries so that many others and so many others that we support. We rejoice in the witness of women who started thank offering boxes nearly two centuries ago as they thought, sought to connect faith, fellowship, and finances. We pray that our loving generosity may combine with others to make a positive impact on this hurting world. Lord, in your mercy. God who provides, we thank you for safe elections in our county and in our country. We pray for the people elected to various offices, including judges, county commissioners, local officials, and school board members. Guide those who govern in our community to pursue policy that seek for common good. Give them humility, wisdom, and courage. Lord, in your mercy, God who provides, we pray for peace in this world. We plea with you to bring about a ceasefire in Ukraine and Gaza. The images of destruction shake us to our very core. We give thanks for veterans who fought for our freedom and for the men and women of today who serve to keep us safe. Teach us always how to work toward lasting peace in our country and in the world. Lord, in your mercy, God who provides, we commend all, all our spoken and silent prayers to you, trusting in your abundant mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you all. Please feel free to share. The I invite you to be seated for a few brief announcements. Uh, just in terms of abundance too, I know that the, we also house both the community chest and also uh, one of the big uh, scout and Cub Scout uh, packs and troops in the community. It was a delight yesterday to see, I think something like 22,000 pounds of food were, were raised and are now safely. So you're worshiping on 22,000 pounds of new food over top of that, and that's a joy that we're able to house that ministry. Uh, if again, you have, I thank those who have filled out a pledge card. If you have not done so and would like to, they actually are in the pews and you can put them in the offering plate on your way out of church. And again, if you have a thank offering box, you can put uh, those uh, in the, there's sort of a couple piles out there and you can put those in there. Um, and if you don't have it today, we'll still receive it. Your, your prayers will still be accepted even after today. After uh, the late service today at lunch, there is a, uh, a free lunch, uh, part of our speaker series, and this is Pastor Emmanuel Mchumvu will be speaking. Uh, again, he's now studying in the country but serves in uh, the diocese, our partner congregations. Now, it turns out that Advent is around the corner, and at our church this year, we're actually going to be moving Advent up by one week because of Christmas being on December, well, anyway, we're moving it up by one week. And uh, so the 26th of November, uh, Advent will start, and we'll start with our wreath-making event on Sunday night, and that's an opportunity for you to make a wreath. Uh, there's more information about that in the online bulletin as well, sign-ups in the narthex. Uh, lastly, uh, next Saturday, we're going to be finishing off. We're taking the next step on the prayer labyrinth. We need some people willing to shovel dirt, not to bury our talents, but to actually shovel dirt. And so if you're able to do that next Saturday. I thank you all for uh, your generosity over the past year. One of the things that we're actually having today is new cameras. So welcome online. I don't have to look over to you there. I can look over to you there. So we have new cameras. And again, this is because of your faithful generosity that allows us to take risks and to move ahead for the sake of the gospel. So I invite us all to rise as we present our gifts. <laughs>
Let us pray. Most merciful God, we lift before you today our thank offering boxes. We pray that the funds collected will bless others. We also pray that you teach us how to connect our faith and our finances so that all that we do might be in accord with your holy will for our lives. Together, we humbly pray. We offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. In the wonder and mystery of the Word made flesh, you have opened the eyes of faith to a new and radiant vision of your glory, that beholding the God made visible, we may be drawn to love the God whom we cannot see. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. in which he was betrayed. Our Lord Jesus Christ took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the great mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ is, is risen. risen. Christ will come again. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. My hope is that today was a day to reflect on how we're called to take risks for the sake of the gospel. And a couple things. First of all, if you'd like to have a prayer request for, for us, please send it in. Um, Pastor Wallace and I are not only happy to pray for you, but to add it to our prayer list. And then uh, if you're going to, if you have any thank offering boxes, feel free to drop those off at the church this week if you haven't done so. And if you have a pledge card, uh, feel free to fill one out. If you'd like to make a pledge, you don't have a card, you can just email finance at stpaulidditz.net just kind of with what you're hoping to give this year. Above all, thank you so much for worshiping with us today and uh, participating together in the ministry we do here. So as you go forward to to dare to take some risks this week. May God watch over your steps and guide your paths. Amen.